Hey everyone, Dockwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Puck. Before we jump into the video, I just wanted to say, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things, it really helps. And if you want to see more content into the future, please consider clicking the Patreon link down below and going to my Patreon, signing up for coaching, or just supporting me in general for that $5 or $10 a month. It really, really helps because for whatever reason, YouTube has not monetized my channel. So I make absolutely no money for making all this content. So in order to keep up making content in the future, if you guys really like it and you want to see more of it, please consider supporting if you can. Now that we got that out of the way, let's jump back to the video. So Puck is a mid-hero, pretty much only played as a mid-hero. It's not really played as a support like some other mid-heroes are. It has been played as an offlane hero. He kind of has been there occasionally in the past, maybe a year or so ago, but it's not really that relevant recently, so I'm not really going to talk about that. He's mainly just a mid-hero, and I think that's because he needs to get those levels. He needs his farm in order to be effective with the way that his spells work and these kinds of things, because this hero doesn't super scale into the late game. It's not like the best late game hero ever. The main way that you want to think about Puck is a hero that wants to do well or dominate the lane and then control the side lanes, control the map, um, control the game, kind of like a spirit hero, similar to that, but he's a little bit more um, effective at team fighting, a little bit more effective at control than those heroes. The other main way that you can think about Puck is Puck is one of the most elusive heroes in the game. It's a very high skill cap hero because all three of his main abilities, basically, um, aside from his ultimate, are abilities that allow you to escape. They allow you to be maneuverable. They allow you to get in and out of fights, to dodge a lot of spells, to be super annoying. They're also very low cooldown, so you can use them a ton in fights. You can use them multiple times, two, three, four times in a fight. It's just one of these heroes that you have to constantly be pressing a ton of buttons, and if you're able to effectively master this hero, you can just be a super annoying hero. It's so hard to kill this hero. Probably the most elusive hero in the game, even more elusive than a lot of the spirit heroes. And because of that, Puck can just dominate games where you don't have counters, like big AoE spells like Black Hole, Chronosphere, um, something like Instant Hexes from Lion or Shadow Shaman, anything like that. If you don't have something to deal with Puck, he will just cause um, chaos in the team fights. He will cause chaos on the map and be so hard to deal with. And so that's the main way that you can think about Puck. So in terms of how he does that, he does a lot of magic damage, but you can do physical damage. Physical damage, um, there's physical damage builds that have been created that are more recent, but they are viable. It's something that you can do on this hero, and that allows him to scale a little bit more, but the main way that you're going to be playing the hero is through magic damage, also through team fight control with his ultimate, which is really, really good. And actually, if you get ags, which I'll show you in a bit when we jump into the abilities, you can actually um, stun people through BKB, which is actually insane, so it's very, very good in that way as well. So, mainly a magic damage dealer, a very elusive hero, Hard hero to deal with, very high skill cap hero, and also a good team fighter, a good AoE kind of disable um, team fight control hero as well. So that's how to think about Puck. Now let's jump in and take a look at his abilities. So now that we understand Puck in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be one of the most mobile heroes in the game while also offering a lot of magic damage and team fight control like I talked about. So first we're going to take a look at his Q, Illusory Orb, and this is a pretty simple spell in its concept. You just shoot an orb out in a direction, whichever direction you choose, and the orb travels a pretty decent distance. And then at any time during that, you can actually press this D ability here to teleport to wherever the orb is at that current time so you can basically you know do really short ones like this or you can choose to wait for a long time and then finally teleport at the very end one of the keys of this hero is actually learning you know how long the orb lasts so it's one of those things that getting on the very edge is something that you do want to you know try to get something that you do want to practice there is like a little bit of a sense of okay how long is that you know noise happening how long is it till i have to press um press that button to make sure that I can get out. It's one of these things that I even don't have the perfect sense. I know kind of when it's going to disappear, but I'm, I bet it would go a little bit further than that. It's just that, you know, I don't, I'm not the best puck player. I don't have it right on the edge, but it's one of those things that you do have to get used to, even though you might see, okay, well, how long is it actually taking? You might time it, but it's more of a feel thing that you just have to get the feeling for. So that's Illusory Orb. It also does a little bit of damage, which is pretty good. So you can send it, you know, past these enemies here, and it does damage to every single one. It also does damage to all the creeps, so you can see there, it'll clear the creeps, so it's a good farming tool as well. So it's not only a mobility spell, but it's also a damage spell as well for farming and for team fighting. So, that's Illusory Orb. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but in the ways that you combo it with all the other spells and the items that you buy, it can get kind of complicated. There's a lot of buttons to press, and we'll see that um, as I explain the rest of the abilities. So, the next one is 
W, Waning Rift. So this one's pretty simple. It's a, a silence and an AoE, so that's very, very effective, obviously, against heroes that hate silences. What you do is you just press it in a direction, and you silence everything in that AoE. You can see you blink forward just slightly. It's not a very far blink, but just like, you know, a few units, I guess you would say, like two units of your hero, and you just blink forward a little bit, so it's a little bit of a mobility, but then you silence everything in that AoE, and you do damage. You see I did a little bit of damage there. I also do some damage to creeps, so it's very effective as well for farming, so you basically can use both of these spells to farm an entire creep wave pretty much instantly, so that's very good. You can also buy things um, that amp up your spell damage, which helps as well for farming. So that's those two abilities. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You can also use this a little bit for mobility, like going over cliffs, that kind of thing, or, you, you know, people are chasing you at a cliff, at a cliff, and then you jump up it, those kinds of things, to get out of vision, etc. So it's a little bit of an extra mobility, along with a little bit of control with that silence, because there's a lot of heroes in the game that hate silences, and then an AoE silence, silencing multiple heroes at a time, that can be very, very effective. So it's also a little bit of a skill shot, too. You want to make sure that you're silencing as many people as you can with one uh, waning rift. You can also see that these abilities have relatively low cooldowns. So you can use them multiple times in a team fight as well, so keep that in mind. So those, uh, that's Illusory Orb, that's Waning Rift, those are the damage abilities, and then we can look at the Phase Shift ability, which this ability doesn't really do any damage. What it does is pretty simple, you just click it, and you basically disappear for a pretty long duration. Now, obviously, level 1, it's actually pretty quick, you don't, you're, you know, you're not invincible or invulnerable for very long, but once you max it out, it's a pretty long duration, you see, I click it there, there's a little animation on the ground where I'm going to, like, basically respawn or reappear, it's kind of like, um, OD's Astral Imprisonment, or other spells that make you pretty much invulnerable. Uh, and what you can do then is you can also blink out of that. You can cast other things out of that, all that kind of thing. It's one of those things that helps you just be extremely elusive. So you might think that, okay, well, someone's going to go on me. They cast some ability on me. I press this. And then to get out, I do that, you know, with my illusory orb and then teleport to it. Well, that's not the best way to do it, actually. What you really want to do is you actually want to send out your illusory orb first then press E, and then wait for this to go pretty far, and then teleport to it. And that's the way that you can basically be safe while you're waiting for your orb to kind of travel the distance that you need to get into a safe spot. So that's mainly one of the biggest keys to know with playing this hero, is you usually want to send out your orb first, then press phase shift, and then wait for your orb to travel to teleport to it, and that's how you're going to escape, um, just to let you know. Because sometimes people will panic, and they'll press phase shift, but then what happens is they don't have blink or they don't have any other ability to actually keep themselves safe once they come out of the phase shift and then they just get gone on right after that and they die. But if you have illusory orb up, you can send that out and then phase shift and then wait and then you can be safe. So that's kind of one of the main things that you need to combo with. The other thing is, before I get to the ultimate, is you obviously can buy blink on this hero. This can be extremely, extremely effective. You can also buy yules. So you can do things like blink in, silence. You can send out your orb, disappear and then jaunt away, and it's like you, you came in, you silenced them, you did some damage, and then you ran away extremely quickly. You can also, um, you know, if, if somebody silences you, or they go on you, or they apply a spell on you, you can just, um, jewels that away, send out your orb, disappear, and then jaunt away, all those kinds of things. There's just so many different things you can do with this hero, with Yule Scepter and Blink. Now, you're not going to buy these every single game, it just depends, and that's the other thing. There's a lot of different skill builds. You can see there's a lot of different ways to build this hero. You can build it with magic damage, you know, burst damage here. You can build some right-click damage with Witch Blade. You can even build Desolator for right-click damage, etc. So there's a lot of different things you can do with the hero as well, like I talked about. So before we jump ahead and talk about Dream Coil, I just wanted to add really quickly that Phase Shift is not just a spell to like dodge things and escape. It also can be used to attack enemies and the main way to do that is through the Agnum Shard. Now in the past it was a talent and that's why I'm kind of jumping ahead and re-editing the video here because this was just changed in the most recent patch but um, 7.31. But basically now it's just a shard and all this does is when you press phase shift in the AoE around you, you attack every hero or unit, every enemy in that AoE. So we can see we can do it at the Creep Wave here too, and it attacks pretty far actually, and that's how you're going to use things like Witchblade, things like Desolator, those kinds of things to do this kind of Puck right-click build. Um, and so that's the other way that you can use Phase Shift, and the other way that you can not just do magic damage, but you can also scale with right-clicks and those kinds of things. That's Puck's main abilities. That's uh, Illusory Orb, Waning Rift, Phase Shift, all the different builds, the items you're going to incorporate, all that kind of stuff. And now we finally get to the ultimate, which is Dream Coil. So this is, it's not really synergistic, I guess you would say, in the sense that it doesn't really combo with the other abilities in the sense that 
it's not really a mobility spell. It's almost like the anti-mobility spell. So Puck is super mobile. He can, you know, run around, do a, a lot of different things in the fight, cause a ton of chaos, be very survivable. And then this Dream Coil, abil coil ability allows him to basically control the enemy, make them not be able to do the same thing, um, whether it's to keep up with him or to even move in a team fight, etc., etc. So what you do is you just place it in an AoE. It has a similar AoE to Raining Rift, and you just place it down... <laughs> And then from the area you click, anything in that AoE gets leashed, and then if they try to leave that AoE, they take damage and they are stunned for a pretty significant time. So it's one of these spells that you just basically stick it on the ground, you leash people to the central point, and then they basically can't escape. The other thing to keep in mind is Axe doesn't currently have any kind of mobility spell, but any hero like Storm Spirit, like Ember Spirit, Void Spirit, any kind of hero that has a mobility a ability or a Blink Dagger, anything like that, they cannot use it while they are... Uh, dream coiled, so they can't just like zip away or anything like that. So it's one of those things that it's not just like, oh, I'm a storm spirit, you coiled me, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to walk out of it. I'm going to zip out of it. Well, you actually can't. It's just not able. It's basically just disabled. Um, so it's just locking you in place and you can't get out. The only thing you can do is you can buy BKB. So we'll give Axe a BKB here. So we're going to place this down. Axe buys BKB and then he just runs away. And there's pretty much nothing you can do about that. So this is actually the last quick edit that I needed to do after the 7 point. 3-1 patch is that in the past, the Agnum Scepter for Puck actually allowed it so you could stun people uh, even though they bought BKB. So you could use Dream Coil on an enemy, they could pop BKB, and they still couldn't run out. It would stun them um, and do magic damage through BKB, but that actually changed in the most recent patch, and now it's an upgrade to Waning Rift, and pretty much what it does is it just allows you to jump a little bit further, but it also basically allows you to push people out of your Dream Coil. So let's say I Dream Coil Axe here, and then I want to force him basically to go out of the Dream Coil and get stunned. I can use this Agnum Scepter Waning Rift to push him out and stun him and those kinds of things. I actually don't think that this uh, Agnum Scepter is as good. I actually have a feeling it might be reverted, but, you know, maybe I'll make a different guide or update it um, when that happens. But just know that that's what I was going to say, and then I had to edit this in. So, in any case, that is Puck. Those are his abilities. That's how you use them all in concert. And that's his Shard and his Scepter and all these kinds of things as well. So, let's jump into a game and see how he's played. So now we're jumping into a replay here of Quinn playing Puck against Batrider, and unfortunately there's a replay glitch here where it looks like he has a bunch of stacks, so just ignore that. It's not super important. I just wanted to show you early on what you do as Puck, and you basically want to level your Q first, and then you use it to secure range trape CS like we just saw there. So it kind of happened while I was talking, but basically what happens is every time there's a range creep, or sometimes multiple creeps, in range of getting last hit, he uses his Q to secure those along with a right click. Now, you also notice that he's not just using it to secure last hits. He's also harassing at the same time. So it's one of these things where you want to try to use your ability to secure the last hit while also hitting the enemy mid laner at the same time. So we can see he's not only securing the range creep here, but he's also using the orb to try to get you know, a little bit of chip damage in there on the Bat Rider as well. So we can see he did it twice now already to secure the range creep. He also kind of walked backwards to the other creep so that the orb sort of comes out right around his body. So it does damage sort of around you in an AoE a little bit, sort of out there in front of you. So um, it's something I didn't really mention. It's more of like an advanced uh, mechanic there. But uh, we can see how obviously this hero is very high skill in that way. So he kind of walked back to the creeps to try to secure them. We see he secured another creep there as well while also just harassing this Bat, bat Rider down. So not only does he have a stick, to, you know, get those charges up to regen up because the Bat Rider is going to be spamming that sticky napalm, but he's also able to constantly harass the Bat Rider down um, to make sure that the Bat Rider doesn't really have any chance to go on him if he gets level 2 and gets Firefly. So, it's just a really, really good example of how to lane with Puck. Um, you can be very, very strong in lanes. You obviously, you're a ranged hero, you do have decent, you don't have decent right click damage, but you have decent right click animation and travel time, etc. Um, so you can, and a decent right click range. So it's one of these things where you can kind of right click people from range, and then you obviously have good nuke damage from magic damage. Here's another thing that is really, really good that I see pucks that are good do all the time if I watch a replay of them. I even have pucks at my level do them occasionally. Is that obviously heroes like Batrider, pretty much most heroes, you know, Storm Spirit, Lena, Ember Spirit, any hero that's going mid these days pretty much goes to the side camp to farm. And so as Puck, because you have such a long range, high damage nuke in your illusory orb, you can use it to try to steal those creeps from the enemy. So whether you want to ward there, he does have a ward on his side, but you could actually ward closer to the camp 
um, to try to see when they're farming the camp. And you can kind of shoot it even from the lane and actually try to steal the last hits from the enemy. So it's definitely a small strategy that you can do because a lot of mid laners these days are going to try to farm that small camp. The other thing that he did that I didn't really mention too much because I was still trying to talk about that farm, uh, farming small camp stealing kind of thing is that this hero is very, very good at protecting runes and taking runes from the enemy. And he basically will do this by using his illusory orbs. We can go in one direction to either take the rune in the one direction or see if the rune is spawning in that direction. If it's like a six minute plus rune, um, he can see where it's spawning and then use his orb to go in the opposite direction. So it's one of these kind of cat and mouse games you can play with the orb. He can also use the orb in the way that he did just a few minutes ago to kind of take some CS and then get away from the enemy. He doesn't really want to be under Bat Rider if Bat Rider gets a bunch of stacks on him. Um, so it's just a good strategy that you can use there. He's also using his Waning Rift now that he has two points in that to uh, secure last hits as well, to get some harass and secure last hits. So it's one of these things that this hero is very, very good at, you know, harassing the enemy with his magic damage and also securing runes, stealing farm, all these different kinds of things with this hero's ability. So you can have a really, really good laning stage if you just kind of watch other players like Quinn, like other good mid players that are playing Puck and see what they do to secure themselves farm but also harass the enemy. Um... Batrider's not necessarily a lane dominator anymore, but against some matchups, this hero can be really, really good. And we're seeing that, you know, obviously, Quinn is just absolutely dumpstering him. Now gets a kill on him uh, at four minutes. This is insane puck play from Quinn here. Uh, he's 31 last hits to Batrider's 12. Uh, so he's absolutely just destroying this lane. So if you... You know, take anything away from this replay. You can try to emulate what Quinn does here, the small little things that he does, the ways that he tries to, you know, position himself in such a way to get that advantage on the Batrider. And I think you can dominate lanes similarly if you just try to copy these small strategies from the lane. And now from here, he's level 6 already at 4 minutes. Before 5 minutes, he's level 6, and he's transitioning to the early game. If he wants, he can still bully the Batrider, or he can even choose to go to the side lanes. It's really up to him what he wants to do from here. But these are all just really, really good things. Um to do, to emulate, to think about when laning with Puck. So there's a couple things I wanted to show you here. First is that he's going to secure this rune at 8 minutes, exactly like I told you. So he's kind of going to go top and see if it's up there. But then he has a ward bottom and he's going to orb bottom to secure that as well. So something you can definitely do on Puck. You can also kind of stay in the middle of the lane and then whichever rune you have warded, you can see if it spawns there and then go to the opposite one if it spawns in the other place. Then he gets the DD and immediately TP's bottom with his ultimate because it's now up and available. And he immediately gets the kill on the off lane here, which is really, really good. These are rotations that you can do with Puck all the time. Once you hit six, once you have... Um, your ultimate up, you can basically look to gank the side lanes wherever it's necessary. He wanted to make sure that they didn't just easily get this tower for free. Um, the TA has transitioned to the jungle, doesn't really want to lane here anymore against this Enigma. And the Spirit Breaker with the potential black hole coming out. So he chose to come to the side lane, get a gank, and now they're smoking up immediately. Even without ult, you can be very, very strong in this hero. You're very hard to deal with, hard to bring down. You do a ton of magic damage early on with like him leveling like this with uh, usually you're maxing out your... Uh, Q and your W and then just having one point for safety um, in your waning rift there or in your uh, phase shift. So this is just how this hero plays then. He dominates the mid lane and then he goes to dominate the side lanes and help out the side lanes. And this is exactly how you want to be playing Puck. Um, and then obviously securing runes, dominating the side lanes, using your alt off cooldown, just threatening people constantly is exactly how you want to play on Puck. Transitioning to that early game. Now, I fast-forwarded a little bit here, and I just want to show you this sequence, because I think this is kind of important um, in how to understand Puck transitioning to that early kind of mid-game timing after the laning stage is done, what you want to be doing. And we pretty much see that as soon as his uh, Dream Coil is off cooldown, he's immediately going to hunt the PL. And that's largely because there's not really anyone on his team that's able to kill the PL other than him. He has very, very good control for the PL because PL can't use any of his illusions to get away. So this is pretty much what you want to be doing on Puck. Is there an enemy hero like PL, something like that? Um, usually it's the carry, but it could be the mid hero, whatever it is. Is there some hero on the enemy team that it's very hard for your team to kill that your lockdown really helps kill? So that could be Storm Spirit, Ember Spirit, any kind of spirit hero. A PL who's very hard to kill, very hard to lock down. Um, something like a Slark. Any hero that's hard to, you know, corral and and, um, you know, control. It's really your job to hunt them down and to try to kill them whenever you have your ultimate on cooldown or off cooldown. And we can also see, because he's snowballing the game out so much, he can even get really aggressive here onto this uh, 
Batrider even kills the mid hero because he's just snowballing the game so hard. And you can see how basically Puck is just allowing his team to have so much space. He's basically playing a 3v5 game right now. Him and his supporters are just running around the map. The Void isn't really doing much. The TA is just farming. And he's able to pretty much just dominate and control the game by himself. Um, with his two supports, and you can just do this kind of stuff on Puck because you are just so strong. Now, obviously, he kills the Bat Rider in exchange for his two supports, but it basically requires the entire enemy team to come um, and try to kill him or to deal with him. So, this is just a great example of how to play Puck mid game and how strong you can be. You can really, like, honestly 1v5 in a lot of ways if you're having a good game. Now, we skipped ahead a little bit here, and he pretty much has been using his alt off cooldown, trying to kill people. And I just wanted to show you this because this is a perfect example right here of how you bait out spells with Puck and how you can be insanely survivable on this hero. Now, he buys a Ghouls largely for the silence from Silence or the Ultimate there to make sure that he can get out of that if um, that's ever popped and he's, you know, vulnerable there. But I just wanted to show you that because this is the perfect example of how you can pretty much bait out huge teamfight ultimates and it ends up getting the PL and the um, Enigma killed there. We can even go back. Let's just actually, like, go back 30 seconds and watch this happen again. He sees them all come in. He has a vision. He knows they're going to try to do it. He immediately phase shifts and dodges pretty much the entire black hole. He gets caught at the very end there. Then he gets saved by his um, Disruptor, and he pretty much just turns the entire fight there um, onto both of those heroes. It's such a good um, dodge of spells. And then he also uses his um, Yule Scepter to get out of and dodge the Spear Breaker charge. You can also use your Phase Shift as well to just dodge that. It's just such a hard hero to bring down. He's very, very survivable. Basically, unless they commit, like, Black Hole and Global Silence or, you know, they somehow catch him with a Bat Rider Ultimate, it's just so, so hard to bring this hero down um, in the mid-game, especially if he buys, like, Blink, Yules, these kinds of things that allow you to just be super survivable and escape and purge debuffs and all of those kinds of things. So I just wanted to show you that because that's a great example of how to bait out spells with Puck. Now, it's one of these things that you obviously have to know what's coming. He had vision. He predicted what they were going to do because it was pretty obvious they were going to try to black hole him to get him fully locked down. So it's not one of those things where it was like pure reaction time, but it is one of those things you have to understand, you know, what's going to happen in the game, what you're trying to do, how to bait out those spells like we just showed. So... I think that's a great, great example of how to play Puck and how to be super survivable. Um, as we even see him being super survivable here, using all of his abilities to try to get out of um, all of the stuff they were trying to throw at him. So I skipped way ahead here, and I do want to show you, like, eventual team fights and stuff, but I wanted to show you this little trick. So he actually TPs, goes to Fountain, gets regen. I didn't even know this was a thing that was possible before until I watched this replay. He actually uses his Boots of Travel TP, um by to like get full region and then teleport to his orb so he orbs immediately tps home and then as soon as he gets home and like gets in fountain and gets full bottle recharges in that fountain region he immediately uh jaunts back to his orb so then he basically just got a free tp home and then teleported back and got full region basically from that fountain region and that bottle refill which is pretty crazy um so i wanted to show you that little trick which i didn't even know and then i do want to show you this next sequence because it's something that i kind of forgot to mention in the abilities part with the blink dagger and the um yules combo is that um basically i'll just show you this here so what happens is uh, he obviously tries to dodge. I'll slow it down. He tries to dodge, and then he knows they're going to do that, so he actually um, Yuleses, but then they silence while he's Yules. And actually, even though you're kind of invulnerable, you actually do get silenced, and then he comes down silenced, unfortunately, for himself. But the other thing that happens is he takes damage, and then he, um, he phase shifts, and that buys him enough time to get his Blink Dagger off. And that's what I wanted to show you. Um, those couple things is... One, you can get silenced by something like Global Silence or that kind of stuff um, during your Yule, so you do have to be careful about that. You can obviously get... They can place down a Black Hole or some other kind of stun to stun you when you come down from Yules. But the other big thing is that Yules and Phase Shift can buy you that time to get your Blink off, because Blink Dagger has that three-second cooldown when you take damage. But if you take damage and then you press your Phase Shift, that will buy you that time to then be able to Blink. The other thing that I wanted to say is that Blink Dagger has to move in, like, a direction. Um, so, basically, you have to blink in the direction you're facing. So, you have to make sure that you're not trying to blink, like, behind you. You have to phase shift the direction you want to blink. Um, otherwise, you're not going to have to, like, spend the time it takes to turn there and then blink, which potentially gives the enemy a little bit, like, a split second to do damage to you. Or you can take damage from the AoE... Uh, the, the thing that has AoE ground damage, like the um, Enigma Pulse there that we saw. 
So just keep that in mind. You do want to face the way that you want to blink, or if you just phase shift because you're panicking, you want to kind of remember which direction you're blinking so that you can kind of blink in that direction to try to get out because it's very important to do that. So that's a little bit of extra kind of stuff that I wanted to show you that I didn't get to show you in the ability section, but it's something very, very important to know um, for Puck, especially later in the game once you have these kinds of items like blink and yules, etc. So this last clip I want to show you is actually part of the clip I just showed you. Um, we're going to take a look at the same thing, but I just want to take a look at the entire sequence. Oops, that happens. We already saw this, so it's not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> the entire sequence that happens for like the next two minutes, because this is a perfect example of how Puck wants to play. I wanted to show you like team fighting with Puck, but you know, to be honest, team fighting with Puck, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you use your ultimate on the guy that you want to control, those kinds of things. Otherwise, you just really want to have scrappy, drawn-out, all-around fights um, to cause a lot of chaos. So we can see we, he took that fight. It was a lot of chaos there. They got a couple kills. Unfortunately, they expended Chrono. But then, you know, he goes to split push a lane, and he can immediately be back very, very quickly because of his orb, because of his blink dagger, back with his team. That's what you want to do with split pushing with Puck. And then you take these scrappy fights so they don't have Enigma up. They immediately go in. They, um, the, uh, the Shadow Demon ults the... PL, they kill the PL, then they get a coil off on the Spirit Breaker, they kill the Spirit Breaker. It's like this constant, drawn-out, never-ending fight where it's all, there's always somebody dead. Um, because Puck, yes, it's you can take 5-on-5 five five fights, 5-on-5 five five engagements are something you can do. Um, but a lot of times, it's better if you split the enemy up because you're so hard to catch that you can split them up through split pushing. Then, you know, you use your Boots of Travel or whatever to TP to the fight. And you're constantly, like, causing havoc, causing chaos, splitting the enemy up, annoying the enemy, you know, canceling their blink daggers, doing all these things. Even if it is kind of a 5v5, it's drawn out, it's split up, there's different people at different spots of the map, there's different engagements going on, because that is where Puck, Puck excels. Puck doesn't really want to do, like, a straight-up 5-on-5, five five, you know, just five people mashing each other together. He wants to be, like, causing chaos, running around, doing a ton of different things. Um, so we see as soon as there are five alive, he goes back to farming more, and then they go take Roche. But I think that's just the perfect example of how Puck wants to play. We see that, like, two-minute sequence of just constant chaos. We see him kind of break there to split push a lane really quick, and then he goes back and immediately does more scrappy fighting. You saw him almost, like, diving the tier fours, etc. So... I think that's a great example of how you want to think and conceptualize Puck in team fights, etc. on the map. Um, he's very good at split pushing, you know, making the, the enemy kind of go different spots on the map. You see him constantly going to these side lanes, constantly chasing people down, constantly causing chaos and havoc. Um, this is exactly how you want to play Puck, um, along with all that, you know, elusiveness, baiting out spells, etc. that we see in general. So, this is... How you want to play Puck, I hope that help, helps. That's my Puck guide in general, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. Join the Discord if you haven't already. You can request replay reviews there, or when I stream every Friday to do replay reviews, you can just ask me in the chat if you haven't already. Also, there's my Twitch below where I stream every Friday. I've also been streaming other days as well, you know, doing pubs, other things like that. Um, I'm also going to be trying to stream more into the future, and I've streamed on YouTube a little bit as well. Also, there's my Patreon link below if you're interested in coaching. I can coach you. Um, we've had a few coaches or coaches already. People sign up and they've already gained a lot of MMR, so that's really, really great. It's going very well. I really enjoy it, so I really love coaching people. It's very, very fun. So if you are interested in that, go to my Patreon below. Consider supporting me and also signing up for coaching as well. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.